Hi everyone, uh, greetings from my French bedroom. I'm going to show you the round one game in the played in the Croatian league this year. The league started early on in March and there have been some interesting developments before the season started. So I changed teams. I used to play for the same team since I'd started playing chess. And then this winter or last winter, there were some problems in the club with the club i'm not too familiar with it all but basically i had to change teams and then two of my three of my teammates and i switched to ina which is a team that played basically in the same division so we got to mix with them we used to play against them a lot and you can find some of my tournament games against their board one uh in the playlist anyway uh in my last team in my old team i used to play board one in the league now i'm board three uh my teammate mate who's a fide master plays board one for our team and then one guy who who used to be nina before the rest of us joined he plays board two i'm playing board three so round one of the league uh match uh, the, the first match and i want to do well because i'm playing for a new team i have the white pieces against uh, an opponent rated about 1900 he's not young <coughs> that being said he isn't old either but he, he's not a kid that's the point he's not like 11 and he's gonna be actually rated 2400 w when you're playing somebody older than 20 in croatia the rating is probably realistic anyway i started with pawn d4 and my opponent played knight f6. Uh, I sort of knew that he was going to go for the king's indian because there were several games of his in the database and he always chose the king's indian. So c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, we got a standard king's indian. And now again I went for the semi Averbach. I enjoy it more so than the main lines. Uh, so instead of knight f3 you play bishop e3 here. And the idea is you're not blocking your queen and bishop from influencing the g4 square so you can move the g pawn and you're keeping this knight flexible maybe the knight goes to h3 maybe it stays on g1 maybe it does end up going to f3 if you play h3 and secure g4 it's a very flexible system and the bishop on e3 is is useful uh, the queen could come to d2 very quickly and you could castle queen side my opponent played the main move, main move e5 d5 and now there are three moves leading to the same idea uh, the idea is to bring the knight to c5 so we either start with knight a6 knight d7 or a5 when black plays the best way against the semi averbach they always end up having a knight on c5 and the pawn on a5 so those are the the, the, the standard uh, ways to play. My opponent surprised me with c6. Let me just turn off the variation arrows. I hate this new feature on leeches. It's just everything is messed up when you have all of those arrows. Anyway, so here you can go knight f3 and play a sort of normal game, uh, but you can also go g4, which I which I did. So I'm trying to win. g4 is very aggressive and it has several ideas. One idea behind the semi Averbach is to advance with g5 and then of course knight h5 isn't possible another idea is by playing g4 you're stopping f5 with another pawn so basically if f5 is played you're, you're going to trade the g pawn for the g pawn and black has already castled king side whereas the, the white king is still in the center so the g file is going to open and make the position interesting but it's going to be more dangerous for the black king because it's on g8 Okay, and another idea is h4, h5, and of course the g pawn supports h5, so this could lead to a quick king side attack. My opponent took on d5, which is fine. This was, I, I, I don't want to say my prep, but I was still very familiar with this exact position. So cd, cd, of course. I don't want to take ed because then the e pawn could move and this bad king's Indian bishop could actually improve. When you play the semi Averbach, the bishop is even worse than in the main lines because you could just choose to play g5 and against f6 or f5 to play h4, completely shut the bishop down uh, unless it does this. So I'm playing against the bishop by taking cd5. And now he played knight e8, which 
is understandable because he wants to play f5, but I think it's pretty slow. Uh, I played queen d2 because I wanted to castle queenside quickly. My main alternative, of course, was h4, which is the whole point of the opening. And now with f5, I would have taken, and on gf5, uh, sorry, on, on f5, I would have taken ef5. And on gf5, I would have taken gf5 or played g5. But let's say gf5, bishop f5, and now h5. And if I get this pawn to h6, the king is always going to be in trouble. Uh, it, my king isn't too safe either, but uh, I think it's safer than the black king, especially since the bishop and the knight are both going to be fighting for the f6 square. But that was too messy for me. I wanted a position that's easier to play for me than for my opponent. I didn't want to withstand any counterplay against my own king if I didn't have to. So I played queen d2, of course, expecting f5. And now in, in all the variations after f5, I haven't moved my f h pawn forward yet, but I can do that later. But I'm one move closer to, to castling. So f5. And now again, takes. Uh, he took and I played f3, which is the first move the engine doesn't like. Uh, the engine says uh, I've gone from almost plus one to a close to equal position after f3, but, but let me explain. Uh, if I play the engine way, which of course I, I saw, so I take, he takes with the bishop, I go knight f3. My knight is very good, but this pawn can advance, and then this bishop is going to open up. I'm not in time to set up a blockade on e4, especially since there will be a knight coming to c5 at some point supporting e4, and then I, I completely justify the king's Indian. If black manages to push e5, then it's hard for white to play. I, I'm not saying I knew that this is worse than taking on f5, that f3 is worse than, than taking on f5. I thought this was a smart decision. And white isn't worse. White is slightly, slightly better. But I think it's easier to play. As long as this bishop stays bad, and it's going to be bad, uh, black isn't going to have a ton of play. Okay, he played knight a6, the knight's coming to c5. He also could have gone knight d7, I think it's the same thing. Uh, castles, uh, knight c5, king b1. Uh, this is just a prophylactic move, I don't want any trouble. Uh, not only down the c-file, but also with knight b3 or knight d3 check. Seems unlikely now, but worse things have happened against the king's indian, trust me. Okay, so knight f6. Okay, in this position... I wanted to punish him from tr for trying to win the e4 pawn. And I, I wanted to set up a trick with d6 check. So I played bishop c4. In this position, the engine says I'm much better once again. Uh, apparently, knight f6 was a mistake. Uh, knight c bringing the knight to c5 wasn't ideal either. And I think... This is exactly what I wanted to achieve. He's just playing with a bad piece and I have no bad pieces because my knight can be developed. I can read out my bishop over here, play knight e2, for example. And with bishop c4, I lose my advantage. The idea behind bishop c4 was if he takes fe4, then I play bishop c5, dc5 and knight e4, not fe4. And now this pawn is a very dangerous passed pawn. I mean... The engine says equal, which is extremely surprising. It takes on e4, fe4, and plays queen h4 and says that black is fine. Okay, I have to defend the pawn, so let's say let's say queen e3. I find it very hard to believe that, that this is completely equal since d6 can come with check and the pawn is two squares away from queening, and c5 is hanging if I manage to defend e4. But okay, that's that's the best line if black finds the best line. Instead of bishop c4, my second candidate move was to just take on c5 and after this h4 and just keep pushing the pawn. Now e4 is safe, d5 is still a passed pawn. Um, I don't see a lot of play for black. This bishop still cannot go to h6 and my plan was to do this. Bring the knight to d3 or to g4 if this pawn somehow disappears. 
<clears throat> and this should be, <clears throat> according to the engine, a very big advantage for white, more than plus one. But okay, bishop c4. He didn't play the best way, he played b6, and now I'm better again. And I returned the favor uh, by playing queen g2. Now, queen g2, I thought, was pretty smart. It allows black to equalize again. Uh, but from a human perspective, let me explain queen g2. I wanted to support e4 and pin the bishop. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, he played king h8, which is what I'd expected, which is bad. So, okay. What he should have done is fe, fe, and then knight g4. And this makes a lot of sense. Because now I, my bishop's in trouble. So I, I have to do something. Uh, if I move the bishop away, then there's knight f2 or rook f2. So it could even be much worse. So I have to play rook e1. Then he takes the bishop and then plays king h8. Now the bishop can come to h6. And yeah, I understand now why this is equal. I just didn't see it during the game. I didn't, I didn't see knight g4 at all. Okay, he played king h8. I played knight g2 uh, and he played a6 which, I mean, he probably wants to go b5, b4, but I think that's pretty slow. Uh, now I'm in control of, of the entire board, I feel, and I don't think that misplacing these two pieces is going to be a big deal. I played rook hg1, he has to defend, so rook g8, and now bishop g5. Again, I, I should have taken on c5, and at this point I have to admit I didn't consider it at all, because he just takes with the b-pawn, and this bishop is very bad. Apparently this was the best the best way to play, followed by knight g3. I, I didn't even consider bishop c5 at that point. I played bishop g5 because now the knight's pinned <clears throat> and e4 is safe. And my plan is simple. I want to go knight g3 and take on f5. And by taking on f5, I basically get the e4 square for my c3 knight. That was my plan all along. So when I take and he takes, I can then go knight e4 and, and get rid of this knight. He played b5, which, okay, is a logical follow-up uh, to his play. I should say bishop g5 is, is not a good move according to the engine. The position's equal again. Bishop b3 is forced. He played bishop d7, which is a great move. Knight g3. And in this position... Uh, he made a huge strategic blunder. Uh, I want to gain control over f5, or if he takes with the bishop, I'm going to recapture with the e-pawn, and this knight is going to have the e4 square. If this knight gets the e4 square, look at all of my pieces. There's the bishop, the knight on e4, the queen and rook. So what he should do is play b4, get rid of this knight, and after knight c2, fe4, fe4, and something. I, I don't know what. Bishop f8 is the engine recommendation, but I guess rook c8 would be fine. Or even knight b3. What he did is he played knight b3 straight away. And now after a b3, uh, of course, b4 doesn't really make that much sense because I have more options. I can, for example, go knight a4. Uh, and this knight, if I ever get rid of my e-pawn, is going to be a great piece. So if I can take on f5, I think I'll be strategically winning. And that's what happened in the game. He played queen e8, preventing knight a4 after b4, which is understandable. Uh, and I just took on f5. Queen e8 was a big mistake. The engine wanted him to play f4, uh, and now... Playing knight f5 isn't as good because he manages to blockade some of the diagonals and my bishop could be in trouble. So knight h5 here and let's say queen e7 and bishop h4 just to save my bishop. And this should be a big advantage for me, but not but not winning. Instead, he played queen e8. And now it's just game over strategically. After knight f5, he has to take. If if he doesn't take, I take on g7 and take on f6 and just win a bunch of pieces. And once he does take, ef5 is huge. My knight's going to be sitting on e4. And if he exchanges, then fe4 followed by f6 is going to win the game because past f-pawn, the bishop is 
blocked the bishop on g7 doesn't have any squares. Uh, I don't know what to suggest here. The engine says queen d7, which puts pressure on the pawn. But then I, I, I think on queen d7 I can just go queen h3 and then take on f6. Uh, still, knight e4 is coming. Anyway, he played knight h5. Uh, and after knight e4, now the engine says plus 4. Uh, but it's very easy to understand why f6 is going to be played and queen g4 is going to be played and the knight is hanging. So he needs to do something now. He needs to, for example, play bishop h6 because how else does he save his pieces? Uh, but now I have knight d6 and his position collapses after, for example, queen d7, queen h3 once again. If he takes my knight, I take his knight. If bishop g5, then queen h5, and everything's collapsing. He played queen d7, uh, but queen g4 just wins a, a piece immediately. Uh, if knight f6, I take it. If knight f4, what was played in the game, I win a piece by playing f6. His queen is hanging, his bishop is hanging with check. So if queen g4, uh, fg7, if he moves his queen, fg7, and here he resigned. Uh, but even if I don't win a piece, I think this is such a powerful setup, this knight on e4, with this weakness on d6 and this passed f-pawn. I think eventually the game would have been winning anyway, uh, because it's just too much pressure. So, this was a relatively short game, 27 moves or something. And you can imagine I was really happy to win round one. Uh, it's always a great feeling to have a good start in the league, uh, especially because it's a team event. And then especially since I was playing for a new team. So I wanted to, to prove my position on, on board three. I wanted to prove that, I, yeah, that it was okay to for them to uh, have us join the team. Anyway, I'm going to show you my round two game in the league played in the league tomorrow. Uh, let me know what you think about this one. Uh, and if you have any questions, I will be reading the comments and answering. So please leave them below. Uh, thank you very much. Stay tuned for more chess.